the first stage is be honest about your passion because God has given you the desires of your heart. And so what happens is people, you know, if Lincoln pursued politics like church, because we're talking about them, well, they were pursuing their destiny. They were pursuing the power to make a difference through the role of a statesman. That was the plan of God. And so um, to me, the first step is be congruent, honest about your passion. And where I, where I go is I take people into a state. The key is state. Get into a peak state. Get into a state where you're feeling fairly empowered and optimistic and juiced. I don't, put on your best music. Get a Starbucks. Don't let anyone bug you. Get in a moment when you're, at, when you're accessing what it feels like to be at the top of your game. That's important because you're opening up all the synapses to, to what you really are all designed to be. At that moment, I tell people just do a free consciousness flow. Just say, God, help me to get in touch with what I'm really all about because... The, the, the DNA of the oak tree is already in the acorn. So your full destiny and its glorious fulfillment is already in the microcosm of your heart. When Saul, the first king in Israel, came to Samuel, the great prophet, Samuel the prophet said, I need to talk to you because I'm going to tell you about everything that's in your heart. The reason why Saul was looking for the prophet is because he lost his, um, all of the donkeys for the farm, which meant his, his means of economic survival was in jeopardy, so he was going to what he considered to be, you know, the prophet, or the, today would be like a psychic, to, where, where's my lost, you know, tractors? And the prophet basically said, yeah, he said, uh, you're looking for your tractors, don't worry about that, they're, they're already found. The reason you really came to me is because there's a destiny. And so God manipulated your problem to bring you to this moment. I wonder how many people have problems that are manipulated by heaven to bring them to this moment. What am I really supposed to do with my life? Saul, so he says to him, in your heart is a king. We're going to talk tomorrow about your call as a king. Saul had no idea he was a king, but the prophet could see it. So getting in touch with your heart is the first thing. You've got something in you that's bigger than your living. And, and that gap between what's in you and what you're seeing is where the tension comes, the midlife crisis. So the first step is write down the top 15, 20 things you want to be in your life that you've never been. Write down the top 20, 30 things you want to do that you've never done. Write down the top 20 things you want to experience you've never experienced, learn that you've never learned, see that you've never seen. And uh, when you get done with that list of what you want to see, what you want to experience, what you want to be, what you want to do or know, um, take that list and then, then, then ferociously whittle it down to your top 10. Always asking yourself over and over again, what gives me the most juice? because what people unconsciously do, the more, the more spiritual and religious they are, the more they mess this up. It's amazing. If I can get someone who's totally a secular individual, I can work fast. If I'm working with a really nice missionary person, I, it takes me longer. Because what, 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 what people with a clear, what sensitive conscience do is they embed what they think they ought to want into what they want. So they say, I want to help the poor. I want to, you know, and they're putting all kinds, of, I want to worship. It's like, well, no, no, take all that out, unpack it for a second. I want, to just, I want you to tell me what is your passion in terms of what you want to do, experience, be. And if that really is it, we'll put it in the top ten. But many times I've got to shake the tree to, so they could say, I want to make a lot of money and travel and make an impact and hang out with professionals. I've had this happen where once people get clear on it, it's like, whoa, you feel the juice. So we get the top ten. Once we get the top ten, I work them down to the top three. The reason we do that is like a horse race in terms of comparing one to the other is once I get the top three or four, or five or six, I really know what's in their heart. Now, God is going to do a job of refining it, but that's essentially where true north is. That's their passion. If I could get you to articulate your passion and say it without guilt or without unbelief, I can create the attraction factor for favor. Because once you start to say who you are and what you're all about, you're resonating harmonically with the design of, this, of heaven for you, and there's a certain, every voice has a signature sound. Every voice is like a thumbprint, different. And when your voice goes out, resonating with your design and purpose and destiny, even though you don't fully comprehend it, and it's not as pure as its final form, once you speak what you're all about, you attract to you the resources you need to manifest it. You're on the way to becoming connected to who you really are and what you're called to do. That's the step. The real spiritual part answer is I would, I would always add this caveat. I would add, add this, God, show me, it's just a prayer, show me what talents, gifts, and abilities you've given me so that I can, I can leverage my life to the greatest stewardship of influence for the sake of others. Start off with that, 
kind of focus so that you get you open up to the idea that you might have talents and gifts and other people impacted and add that nuance to it but you're going to end up at the same intersection either way whether you pray with more focus or whether you just kind of throw it up in the air if i can get people clear on passion i could get them in the step towards where favor will start to work once favor starts to work the law of attraction takes over you know the average person is thinking 1500 words a minute this is amazing to me 1500 words a minute that's a lot of traffic so when those words are going on 1500 words a minute there's tremendous capacity for distraction when i'm working with clients and i'm teaching them how to operate with the spirit realm i say you need to start looking at this the way jesus taught as a rabbi taught his disciples he said when you go into the territory that you want to influence release your peace upon it so one of the great mysteries is your state if it's one of peace, if you're at peace with God, at peace with yourself and others, you carry a capacity to influence the sphere around you so that when you go into that environment, you can release peace upon the environment. Now, 1,500 words a minute of internal dialogue <laughs> dials down. And people will say things when you're in an environment where you're spiritually kind of in control because you've released peace. And they'll say things like, um, you know, we don't normally do this, but... And that's the, that's, the, that's the preamble to a change in policy, something they've never done before. And I, oh, when I hear that, I always know that's favor, working with the authority of peace. And the two of those things flow together when you're in your passion, because your passion will move you into the spheres of influence that accomplish your desire. And then you release your peace. 1,500 words a minute. In one nation I went into, the interior ministry had, a, had a, um, almost like a, a disorder like monk. You know, like, like, like the detective, he was like, he was obsessive compulsive. And he's a high level political figure. And when he came in to meet with us, we're talking about reforming the prison systems. He was constantly adjusting his telephone, his cell phone, and his pen, and his paperwork. And we're watching this, it was like a neurotic ritual. We're horrified because, you know, we're down there talking about reform because we work with nations, governments, courts, and doing transformation projects. And he's like, this, this, this. And I said, this is disastrous. We forgot to do the spiritual part. We were functioning like a bunch of consultants. Time out. We leave. We go down to a van in, on the street. We get in the van, pray. We start praying. We join hands. We get into harmony with the spirit realm. We, we agree together that God is going to have his way and we release peace on the situation on the man. When we go back in, we shake his hand again. He starts to fidget and all of a sudden blinks totally calm. At that moment, an entire nation was opened up to us and a military assignment to, to work with a contract with their entire military happened in a blink that fast. That's how real these principles are. Passion, favor, peace, agreement, operating in, in convergence or operating in, in your calling.